How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how a primer bulb system works on a snowblower carburetor. It's incredibly simple, but some of you may not know exactly how it works, and today, I'm gonna to show you. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I have in front of me today your average snowblower carburetor. This one is from a Briggs & Stratton engine. What we have here is the fuel inlet, and then over here, we have the primer bulb inlet right there. So that's where your primer bulb line will hook up to. I'm going to remove the bowl in a moment to show you exactly how this system works. But basically, on a snowblower, you're normally going to have a primer bulb and a primer line. Now, the reason that most snowblowers and also some lawnmowers will use a primer bulb and line is because it makes starting up an engine in colder weather much easier. Because when you prime the carburetor, what you're doing is you're putting fuel into the barrel of the carburetor. And when you pull over your engine, there's going to be lots of fuel readily available that will get sucked into the cylinder of your engine, making starting easier. The bottom of the bowl is going to be sealed by that red gasket right there. You guys can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this bolt and then remove the bowl so that I can explain to you exactly how a primer system works. So with this bolt removed, I have removed the bowl of the carburetor as well as removed the float rod and the float and needle valve assembly as well so that I can show you the internals of this carburetor. So just to situate ourselves here, again, there is our primer line inlet right there. And that goes directly down to that hole right there at the center of your screen. And that hole right there at the center of your screen, you can see my workbench under there. So that is what's known as a through hole. And essentially what happens here is when you put your thumb over the hole on this primer bulb, you are pushing the volume of this primer bulb and all of the air that was in this line through the primer line inlet here, through the hole into the bowl of the carburetor. And like I said, the bottom of the bowl is going to be sealed up by that little red washer there, but the top of the bowl is going to be sealed up by this O-ring here. So because the O-ring is there, it won't let any of that air that you're priming into the bowl escape. This is why the bowl of your carburetor doesn't leak because it's sealed up. Now you have to imagine when the carburetor is sitting like this and the float is installed, that bowl is going to be filled with fuel. Now when the air goes into the bowl of the carburetor that's filled with fuel, that air will end up displacing some of that fuel. Now normally what's supposed to happen is the fuel has nowhere else to go other than through the main jet, the distribution tube, and then up into the barrel of the carburetor. And if you look right at the center of the carburetor there, you guys can see there is the end of the distribution tube sticking out. So again, you depress your primer bulb, air goes through here, pressurizes the bowl, the air displaces some of the fuel that's in the bowl, and then the fuel is supposed to shoot up that distribution tube into what's known as the barrel of the carburetor. Now I'm going to show you a brief clip from a Cub Cadet snowblower that I was working on when I went ahead and depressed the primer bulb, but fuel was not coming out of the main jet and distribution tube, but fuel was actually coming out of one of the smaller holes on the carburetor. This led me to believe that either the main jet or the distribution tube was clogged because on this carburetor, not only do we have the hole for the primer line, but we also have what's known as a small pilot jet right there at the center of your screen. So what could happen is if you have one of these carburetors and your main jet distribution tube is clogged, that fuel that is being displaced by the air will literally have nowhere else to go because your needle valve will be in a closed position. So the only place the fuel will be able to go is through that little tiny pilot jet, which means that you'll see fuel coming out of one of these smaller holes instead of up the distribution tube. So I'll show you that clip now. When I prime it, the fuel comes out of this port here instead of coming out of the main jet. So this engine fires up every time first pull when you prime it because it's putting fuel into this opening here, but I have to keep priming it to keep it running. So this leads me to believe that the carburetor isn't pulling fuel through the main jet. So I went ahead and pulled the carburetor apart and the main jet was open. However, check this out. Look at all that gunk built up right there. Unbelievable. 
So as you guys saw, in the case of that Cub Cadet, the distribution tube was clogged. So when I primed the carburetor, fuel was coming out of one of the pilot jets. And one of the main symptoms of a clogged main jet or distribution tube will be the fact that your engine will only run if you keep depressing that primer bulb. So what you're essentially doing is creating basically a makeshift fuel pump. Instead of the carburetor and the engine drawing fuel naturally through the main jet and the distribution tube, you have to continuously pump that primer bulb so that you're pressurizing the bowl of the carburetor and forcing fuel up through that pilot jet, which is then feeding your engine fuel. If you stop depressing that primer bulb, your engine then shuts off because it can no longer pull the fuel through naturally. So in the case of that Cub Cadet, I went ahead and removed, disassembled, and cleaned the carburetor. You saw just how much gunk was clogging that distribution tube, and that was because my customer was running an 87 octane fuel. That was from earlier in the season, so probably like a spring or a summertime fuel that he was using for his lawnmower. The fuel broke down, clogged up that distribution tube. So after I cleaned the carburetor and got everything reinstalled, this was the end result. But now when I go ahead to prime the primer bulb, you're gonna notice that fuel is gonna come out of the main jet instead of that little hole there. I'll try to get a better shot of it here. I'm gonna prime it. See all that fuel coming out? So this thing's gonna run, it's gonna fire up first pull like it did before. Uh, the only difference is I won't have to keep priming it because uh, what that was doing is acting as its own fuel pump, right? So now this should run under its own power. So with the throttle full, I can go ahead and prime it and we'll see. Now, if any of you would like to learn a little bit more about these lawnmower or snowblower carburetors, I do have a very in-depth video breaking down one of these small engine carburetors and explaining every little detail on exactly how they work. If you'd like to check that video out, you can click in the top right of your screen, and I'll also link it at the end of this video at the end screen alongside my carburetors playlist. That playlist includes every single video I've ever done that relates to a carburetor. So if you guys wanna check that out, Oh, you can click those links there. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Like I said at the beginning, extremely simple, but a lot of you may not realize how exactly that system works. And like you guys saw in that last video clip, after that Cub Cadet had the carb cleaned and all of that gunk removed, the snowblower ended up firing up on the first pull and ran smoothly after that. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.